Okay, so I think I'm getting used to the curveball that YouTube has thrown us. You used to be able to have a button where you could set up your live stream and up here it would say go live. So, but now they just want you to magically somehow to be ready <laughs> when you press the go live button. So anyway, uh, yesterday I, I ran in, out of time on this little project. I was helping Danner and his dad um, do this, uh, help them with this stair issue. They're trying to frame a new stair, and I'm going to I'm trying to show them all the pieces. See if I can get back to that view. So I started out in paper space, just doing a section of the stair and I always do this when I start to build a stair where I lay out all of the pieces and parts and so that I can get my stringer, this stringer exactly in the right place when I'm framing because when you're framing, you don't always have, well, you should have all the information available. Let me turn on the floor framing. existing yeah so all the white framing there is the existing and all this tan stuff the wood colored is the new stuff so uh, the point i was trying to make was that uh, when you're framing you you're just like you know looking at this where's the decking you know you're looking at that and you have to place your string or someplace right well if you just place it at seven and a half or whatever you think your rise is what is this seven and seven sixteenths is what our rise is then you can see it's going to be in the wrong place because you're not accounting for all of the stuff that you need to be accounting for which is your finished floor and your treads and the way we do this is put uh, Advantech as a subfloor on top of our stringer. So anyway, just to kind of recap what we had from yesterday, I'll show you. This is the first little stair. And I went ahead and put in uh, a piece of drywall here and a skirt board to show why we put this two before on the side that should be that wood color because uh, it's new. Yeah. Oops. Didn't mean for the whole thing. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It helps to distinguish between. That's why I left it white like that. Is to show the difference between this two before and the stringer. And you nail that two before on the side to space it. To space the stringer off the stud wall because it allows you to slide your drywall down in there you see and it's really not ever cut that neatly you know they just cut it off roughly uh, against that two before and you slide your drywall down behind there and then you slide your skirt board in this is your skirt board right here and then you butt your finished riser material to that and your tread material see and that inch and a half gives you all that room that you need so you need to nail on oops it got stuck in the wall so you need to nail that two before on to the side of your stringers and um I don't think I put it on this one because I was kind of in a hurry and I didn't put it on yet. So anyway, so this, let's go ahead and show where these three stringers, if I can get situated here, sorry about all the zooming. And so I, I went to my section and my section told me because I'm planning properly that I needed to put this stringer at that point at this height off the subfloor and I can do that with confidence 
because I have planned it properly. Where's the center? What is it? Oh, it's 18 inches. Because I will have another stringer right in the middle. You see? And you notice that this one, now again, you're going to nail that two before on the side of the stringer. Okay? And I'm kind of taking a shortcut here, but we don't forget to nail that two before. What it does is it gives you um, it gives you that space, but it also helps st strengthen you know strengthen up your stringer because the grain of the wood is running this way. You got this you know it's just a narrow thing. You're cutting all these triangles out uh, of your stringer. And the grain's running this way, and it just helps stiffen up, uh, you know, on, on the two outside ones. It helps stiffen up the stringer. I've actually put them in the middle, on the middle stringer, too. If it's a real long stringer, you know, these aren't that long. But if it was real long, I would go ahead and nail one on the middle one, too. But this is going to have a wall right here. See where these two lines are? There's going to be a wall behind the toilet and go up and... A support also support the stairs so this is going to be really strong so you really don't have to worry much about that now that kind of brings us up from yesterday I had put this landing in let me see if there's anybody watching I mainly do this hey Richard I mainly do these videos for the owner because he's going to have to uh, build this and he's gonna you know he's a scientist so He's not, he doesn't frame every day, <laughs> but, uh, he wanted to use these two befores for this landing and, uh, to keep it shallow and I've got them on 12 inch center. So it should be pretty strong. But the problem with this is this outside piece is going to have to be a two by 12. I think you see down here, down here are the stringers. For this low, the small, the small run, this right here, these three, and that they're typically leaning against this piece of, of the landing right here. So, um, the one way to do this, if I can stop going inside the wall or the toilet, is either put a, uh, I don't think he's going to want to put a, two before you can solve this by on the end let me see by putting a two before to support the landing let's do that I think that's probably a good idea and that'll I still think this let's see what a a two by twelve here would do for us if that would if that was eleven and a quarter 11.2 yeah that's what needs to happen because you're gonna have to have something to back up those you know to attach to attach these stringers to they they gotta be you know they gotta be leaning against leaning against something so I'm gonna show that if you don't want to use a 2 by 12 you could use a 2 by 10 or something but, um, and of course, all I can do is draw. It's like, uh, you know, I can't obviously make people do things the way I draw them. All I can do is, you know, pray for you and ho hopefully you'll do the right thing. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ray, Ray, Ray and Dan are amazing people and they're really smart. So all I'm trying to do is give them a suggestion. Okay. They could turn that one that way. And I'm trying not to get too far back because I know the toilet is right behind me and I'm going to run into it. And uh, that would support. Actually. That's not what I meant to do. I apologize. I meant to, I actually meant to just put it under this, 
right like this that's what I meant to do because this this is actually going to be supporting the the 2 by 12 if you do it this way why am I getting that weird trans transparent effect that will you know just something and I think what you do now is since uh, and why is that green is just put it like this like that and you need one on both I knew the toilet. Oh, that's a wall. I'm going to run into the toilet here in a second. I can feel it. It's right behind me. I can feel its presence. But right here, you know, then you've got something on each end to support that landing, and you've got something to back up these um, stringers. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to move. Let's see. I'm going to move the treads up. How far is that? Let's move them up 10 feet for a second. And then let's move up our temporary. Now see, I call them temporary, but they're permanent. What we do is we take Advantech and we create these uh, permanent, like a subfloor for your steps. Nobody else does this, okay? If you want some strong stairs, you do it like this. If you don't want strong stairs, I can't help you. Um, it would take you some Advantech and, and rip it down and make some treads. Make We call them temporary, but they're not because I glue the suckers down. And what I do is I allow for it. I'll show you in a second because this is part two. Oops, I didn't mean to copy that. I need to move it. Oops. So what did I do? This is the problem with the live TV. Let me just show you right quick. You see, you see this part right here is the stringer. Okay, this is that Advantech, and this is your tread. Okay, you have to account for it. You can't just put, you know, cut your stringer as normal. You have to adjust the height of your stringer off the landing to account for it okay um, so that's where we came up with that 8 and 11 sixteenths from the top of your landing to the top of your stringer uh, for if if you're if 7 and 7 sixteenths works for your rise then that's where your you would allow you would drop your stringer down enough to have it right there and then you'd have your inch tread and then you'd add your uh, laminate flooring your engineered flooring which is what they're going to use you have to know what you're going to use okay when you're building stairs you have to know what your finished floor thickness is there's no way around it if you don't then you're going to have sucky stairs they're going to be this riser is going to be off so see that seven seven sixteenths you go down here and you got seven and seven sixteenths okay you go down to the floor and you got seven and seven sixteenths and you know why because we made we cut off if you watch the video from yesterday it was kind of long it was a couple of hours but if you watch it you'll see that we cut off the bottom we made that six and three sixteenths we cut that off we didn't cut it off the top of our tread you never cut anything off the top of your your tread on your stringer you always cut it off the bottom over here if this tuba this was a pattern I was demonstrating how you would make a pattern and lay it on your other two by 12 okay when you adjust this the height of this bottom stringer this bottom riser you're cutting it off the bottom of it not the top of it if you cut it here then this riser is going not is not going to be seven and seven sixteenths, and you'll start a snowball effect. You'll have to cut every one of these off, whatever you cut that off. Okay, don't do that. Cut it off the bottom. Okay, 
I don't know how many times I can stress that. I've seen people come in and they'll go, oh, I need to adjust this bottom uh, riser. And they'll cut it right off here. Guess what you just did? You just made the second riser too tall. Okay. So this is why you plan this out on paper. This is why we do stair sections. Can you see? I was getting ready to adjust this stair section because this is actually what will go. I think there's a nine. This is what will go on the actual drawing, you see. We can't put we, we don't put three dimensional drawings in our paper drawing. We, we, we need to make sure that our paper uh, drawing matches the 3D drawing. Okay, and that's that two by 12 I just put in there. And you see that'll give this something to lean against and then you'll, you'll have those two before props. If I were to draw this correctly, it would look like that. Right. but this one is beyond you see and what we would do is uh, we would hatch this part well this part we would put a hatch on, on the if I can get my con control of my computer you know it would be that would be hatched anything you're cutting through has a poche or a hatch to indicate you're cutting through it. Okay. Anything that is beyond or you're not cutting through is not hatched. So I'm cutting through in front of my stringer. Okay. Now these, these are hatched. You just can't see because of the way the SketchUp working. If I delete this background, which I have locked, if I just delete it, which I probably should just do. You can see that um, they were hatched. And you would usually make these a different. And, and what we have are these little wood patterns. Select. We would use a different pattern or a hatch for each material to indicate that material, if I can find it. So see right, like right here and see for some reason, oh, not, yesterday I was having trouble with this. Oh, it's the scale of it. It needs to probably be like six inches. There we go. Just something like something like that, you know. And then on your your on your drawings, you say you have a little key, and it'll say this hatch means oak tread, and that hatch means advantage, and this hatch means a pine one by eight, you know, pine one by eight or whatever, or pine material. You're typically just denoting a material, not a specific size or whatever. So, but I'm not, when I get ready to, um, uh, see, I'm going to, I'm going to do all that because I'm going to fix my drawing. Where, there we go. I'm going to fix all that when I do my, my drawing on paper, in paper space right now. I'm in model space. Okay. Oh, now the other thing I would do too is just bring over these uh, two and they would go up to meet the uh, you don't have to do this obviously but it's just going to keep you from having to bolt the heck out of the landing to the studs if you don't do that, you're going to see, it's always better to rely on um, a situation like this where you have what I call positive bearing than trying to rely on a fastener 
that could snap. Or, I mean, I've literally seen screws and nails break. Okay, they they do, they will, especially screws. I'm telling you, the material that screws are made out of, unless they're hardened steel, there's some kind of crazy cast material now, and um, they'll just snap off. You can drive a screw in halfway or just a little bit and just tap on it, you know, bend it over and break it off. Uh, a lot of the framing screws that are sold nowadays. So you want to rely on something, a piece of timber, a piece of lumber, a post to hold something up, especially something that's a landing, you know, that's going to have stairs sitting on it. And I just realized that I uh, didn't copy those. Again, live TV. <laughs> live television. I forgot to hold my control key down. because I was trying to get the um, axis locked so I could bring them over without having to. There we go. Now see, if I was just recording this and it wasn't live, I would cheat and pretend like that never happened. I'd edit that out. You never know, I made a mistake. So there we go. Now you don't have to worry about nails or anything holding up that landing. Okay. And of course, you know, like I said, Ray and Dan are smart guys. They'll they'll figure out a way to support. If they don't like that, they'll they'll support it somehow. My, the mainly what I'm trying to do is get this uh, help them get this thing figured out, get their parts figured out, so that like this issue here, the landing. You know, a normal person might think the landing stops at this corner, but it doesn't. This landing in this direction needs to be wide enough for this stringer to set on it. Okay. So, oops, I keep getting stuck in the wall, backing into the wall. So, where am I? Uh, where I am is... I think I'm ready to put, I wish I could just, I need to turn off some of this stuff because let's turn off the decking, the, the framing. Let's turn off that. Let's see, floor framing. Let's see what I want. If I turn off this, I haven't. Yeah, that would be helpful. And then the roof. Framing existing, all oh, that really opens it up. Now you can see, we can set our turret better and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy. First, I'm gonna kinda of reiterate this. This, uh, that's the wrong thing. I meant to copy the The subfloor issue. What I need to do is cut that and then go out of that group and then paste it back because I want it to be So I can't tell you how important it is or can be, how important this can be right here, this, this uh, subfloor step. Now, um, what most contractors do, most carpenters I should say, is instead of doing this, um, Jesus help me with this backing into the wall stuff, God, please. Oh, I know what I can do. I need to turn off the drywall Please see, also turn off all my cuss words or I edit those out when I'm not live. I'm just kidding, kidding. Is anybody actually watching? Probably not, which is okay. This is for Ray and Danner, okay? You can watch, you can voyeur, you just can't uh, 
judge me on my cuss, my curse words. So I can't really stress enough. Uh, and this is this hatch on here is OSB, but this is Advantech. Okay, it, uh, this is your subfloor material. We rip it up into you know 10 inch pieces because your stringers cut 10 inches, 10 inches wide. And then we just cut it as long as the stringer, because remember your stringer is sitting back an inch and a half on each side. It's got a two before on there. I guess I'm not in a big hurry. I might as well just grab that. But what I really ought to do is I should put all this in the same group, honestly. But I'll do that later. I should be able, I think I pasted that in place, yeah. So I can turn this 90 degrees. Let me just type in 90. And then at that edge right there actually it'll go right here let's see that's not the yeah there it is you see and then this will go the whole length when I say Jesus I'm, I'm literally because I believe in Jesus, I'm asking for Jesus' help. So I'm not taking his name in vain. I'm saying, please, Jesus. And often I do get, I do get help. Many times before have I gotten help. So especially on your two outer stringers, you want to put this two before on the side. And again, it strengthens it up and it spaces it off the wall. So see, you can just push this against the wall. You don't have to worry about is it exactly an inch and a half at the top and the bottom and in the middle. And it also gives you a nice place to nail because what you'll do is you'll toenail or screw a, a nail in each stud into your into that two before, okay? And there's a wall over here. It's just new framing and it got turned off. But I can't stress to you... Um, I'll, I'll just show you what, since again, I'm not in a big hurry, I'll show you what um, a lot of carpenters will do. And, you know, this is kind of like giving away a trade secret, or it's like uh, secret society stuff where I can get in trouble. Like carpenters will come after me now for, for criticizing this. But uh, they'll nail down a couple of two or just tack them down, right? This is what they'll do. And, and honestly, I mean, in their, in their defense, they typically put them where there's not that big of a gap. And sometimes this one's not put all the way out to the edge. You know, it's just, you just cut two two befores like that and lay them down and nail them down. And that's your temporary step. And then... When they get ready to trim out the house, they'll take these up and put down their oak treads. But guess what? Uh, when you knock these up, when you knock these off, sometimes the triangle here on the stringer will pop off because for somehow your nails kind of grow to the wood. <laughs> it's like they, they grow to each other, they're rust or something. And when you knock this up with a hammer, sometimes these will pop off, okay? So not only are you doing damage to your stringers by putting these temporary tubifors down there, uh, you're also uh, not making your stair as strong as you could could have. If you had just planned this extra three quarter inch height on your stringer, and all you had to do is cut that off the bottom, all you literally have to do is cut your stringers the same way you always do, but cut that three quarters off the bottom, okay? and your one inch, uh, whatever your tread thickness is, okay? You, you just have to account for everything. That's all it is. 
it's like, uh, why do you think accountants go to college? Because they're valuable assets. Okay. So if you account, if you'll become a carpenter accountant and you account for this stuff, okay, you will have a better stare. Okay. You can glue these down now and guess what? Your job site is safer now too. Uh, you, you're going to be walking on this step just like it was a finished step. Okay. And then when you get ready to, I should just copy these up. What if I got nine more times nine? Did I get too many? I think I did. Oh yeah. Duh. Cause I was, I only had three at the bottom. So you see that's permanent. Now you got some good, job site stairs it's it's secure and guess what also you got something to screw your tread to now guess what you don't have to uh, when you're running your trim screws in for this these treads you can literally screw them into the uh, the advantec and they'll they'll hold what i use is silicone okay a lot of people use construction adhesive but i don't like that permanent aspect of the if somebody, uh, I had somebody break off a nose on a tread one time and it was glued down with the construction adhesive. You know what we had to do? <laughs> we had to, we had to break, we had to basically tear up everything to get it up. And then we had to take a planer and plane the, uh, and it was on one of my jobs. So we had this down. Thankfully, guess what? We had this down. Uh, so it was like a sacrificial piece, but we, planed it and got it smooth again and put a new tread on it. And, um, so anyway, uh, I'll quit harping about that. Uh, so now, now that you've got your, uh, stringers there and on this, um, how you attach these is those little, um, what if I've got some somewhere? Simpson angle brackets they're just little three inch these right here you can buy them at home depot or low see all they are is little uh, i get the three inch ones what are these four inch. you can get four inch whatever and what you'll do you see those t two of the holes you will put in let's turn the framing back on There we go. You see, um, you see how you've got some of this two by 10 to bear against. So you'll put one of those screw holes in that and there, and the other screws will go into this piece you're going to put, which honestly, I thought I had put in yesterday. I think I did. I have it there. It's just in a layer I've got turned off. I think it's in new framing. Yeah, there's a, there's a two by, let's see if I can find it right quick. Framing new, framing, flaming, framing, framing, framing. Maybe I didn't. So let's do that right now. Let's copy. Let's copy this. Copy that. And paste it. Now why is it? That's, you know, I copied that because it was already standing straight up and when you know it it's original orientation when you copy something in SketchUp it comes in at its original orientation I don't know what what to think about that but this is going to go see if I can see It needs to go right there. I think that's a new feature how, um, I don't remember SketchUp doing that before where you can see through materials like that to, to do the, to see where your reference point is that you've selected. 
and that will come over to there, you see. And you don't have to worry about all this. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I usually make this a 2 by 6 to see that gives you that gives you the extra place to put your bracket your the metal bracket I just showed you so you would put one let's go out of that so you would put one of the holes up here on the existing because what that does is that helps hold this up too so it all works together so you put one screw in that bracket up here the other two are down here and it goes in this corner and that holds your, um, you know what? It's not like I'm in a big hurry today. Can I spell bracker bracket? Here we go. And I probably won't find the exact one I want because I um, probably could have put in four. Let's see if I type in a four if that'll. Uh, we're just going to use this one for demonstration purposes. Okay. And I said download and it didn't do anything. So. <clears throat> Again, live TV. Now, where did it go? I had this happen to me one time uh, before. Download. Load this? Yes. Good Lord. All right, so where did it typically, where did it go? <coughs> See, I try to be eff or effective or efficient and it just comes back to bite me in the butt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go two, four, over, over, two, and they're about, uh, we're just gonna say it's a 16th it's not quite that thick. It's more like three thirty seconds. There we go. Okay. And all you do is start you a big snowball because now you got to go find a material to metal. Find your metal. Uh, aluminum, aluminum, steel brushed. I'll just call it that. Oh, shoot. Select everything. So then it would just go. I'm not going to draw the screw holes, okay? You've already talked me into doing enough. Okay? But you'll notice that um, they'll have a hole right here. They'll have three holes in them. So two will hit this piece. And one will hit that uh, uh, that two by ten floor joist. Okay, so then you'll just have uh, one there, and one on each of them. Okay, and again, I'm notorious for backing into the wall. Okay, let's check for comments. No comment. It's like a Joe Biden press conference. No comments. So let's turn this some of this junk back off so I don't have to deal with it. Let's see, framing new existing framing new. Okay. So let's see how far this is hanging over. Half inch, okay. So these treads are gonna be an inch bigger. Paste. You see that? Why does it do that? You see how that's oriented and I just copied it. It's it's like a it's, it's an anomaly. It's 
It's just a, a thing SketchUp likes to do to mess with my productivity. I didn't quite. Oh, you know what? Too what we have is a uh, our skirt board. And see what you'll do is you put your skirt. I mean, I'm sorry, your kicker, your riser material. Let's see if it's going to come in all whacked out. Copy. Paste. Yep. Well, you knew it. You knew it was. Your riser material is just a one by eight that you'll put on when you start to trim out your stairs. Okay. But you'll put it flush up here. You see? And it doesn't, that's a one by eight, seven and a quarter. And it's okay that it doesn't go all the way down because your tread's going to cover it up. I don't know if I can get it to act right. Let's go out here. And then we're going to come down to there. You see? You see why it doesn't matter if your one by eight comes all the way down because when you put your. Uh, tread on and you put all your if we were to do this in sequence let's make sure it's the right length first before i start copying all these i made that mistake on the lower one so that sticks over one half because of your skirt board and i'm about to go nuts getting stuck in the wall and then this Set a half inch this way, and we'll do the same. Well, this will match that, so that's easy. Now we can just copy. Now, see, this bottom one by it's going to be different, and I'll show you in a second. So what you do is you put all your one by eights on first, okay? And we need times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times seven. And the reason you need one up here is because you're going to have to cover up that, um, well, you have to add that. You not only have to cover up the old framing, uh, you just, you need it because you have to add that thickness to the front of each. If you're not going to add that thickness, you got to take it off the back of your stringer, but I don't want to complicate things. On a deck, on a deck framing, you don't, you, you have to cut your, your top stringer off here on the back because you're not adding anything. People make that mistake too on their decks. Then after you get all your risers in there, nailed nice and flush, you'll come back and nail all your treads down. But you'll put all your risers on first. Oops, I meant to copy that. You would think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times seven. There we go. See? Now, of course, this is after all the, your stairs are literally the last thing you want to trim out. You don't want a bunch of goobers walking on your new treads, you know, beer drinking plumbers and, you know, you know, HVAC guys or electricians walking on your new oak treads, okay? You want to put them in the last, the last thing that you can. Put it off till the very end, okay? Even if the homeowner's mad and they're saying, you need to get done now, uh, you know what? They're going to be even more mad if you put these treads in too early and people start walking on with their big nasty feet and um, they mess them up, okay? So you have to manage the homeowner's pain Okay. manage it for them if they don't want to manage it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all this stuff in hopefully I can grab I think I know I can grab this 
without grabbing anything else. Yeah, I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put it in at least with this group, paste in place. So see now that's all one group. Okay, now what I'd like to do is see if I can grab the landing and put it in there. Let's see, I have to cut it. Do I have it? I do have it part. I do have it so well I'm smart, aren't I? I'm whipper whipper snapper smart. So we're gonna cut it. Because you can have nested groups and paste it in there. So now the whole stair, the whole new stair is all one. You see, what I can do now is create a layer for the stair. Because I don't have enough layers, you can see. I need more layers. New. Uh, okay. New stair. Stair, you should say stair new. Put the subject matter first. And then put yourself a little. This goes back to the old DOS days. Stair new. Put your underscore on there for you old guys, your old cat guys. All right, so, oh, look here. I was going to show you why. Oh, the top and bottom one by eight have to be cut differently. And it's because physics. Okay. Let's see. It's just sticking through. You can't tell because it's just it's into the floor, but it has to be. I'm just gonna leave it like that for right now. See that one's gonna be six and fifteen sixteenths. Doesn't have to be exactly. You can leave a little gap there. Let's see if I can grab it. Grab the bottom and bring it up. What was that? That was a. Uh, yeah, you see, it had to had to be perfect. You can leave a little gap there. Because you're going to butt your uh, flooring into it. Now cover it up. See? Just building little tolerances along the way. And let's go up here and see what this one is. Let's turn on our decking. I'm just going to turn on the decking. So this one would come up. This one would have to be raised up. But again, it's, it's, you won't see the, there you go. You won't see it because you, again, you know, your tread will cover it up. So what do we have from here? Yeah, the, the, um, the flooring is a half inch engineered wood. So I can laminate flooring. So again, you wouldn't really know, you know, since you would say six and 15 sixteenths, that's weird. Well, that's because you plan this out and you know you're gonna add 12 millimeters flooring. That's how I expect out uh, to this, okay? So that is your new stair. Let's turn off the decking for a second. Now, I'm trying to find out where that line is, that construction line. This is, uh, Ray wanted to, be, wanted to build this landing out of two by fours. Normally I would build the landing out of like a, a two by eight or two by 10, whatever scrap I had like left over from the floor joist or something. But he's, you know, he wants to build like this, that's fine. The only thing is you're gonna have to have something for these stairs to be against, you know. So if we turn our walls back on, where's our framing new? Yeah, well, I'm inside of a group or something. And he's also got this issue, I showed this in the, yesterday's video, where these rafters 
the existing rafters on this gambrel shed, you know, these are the white ones are the existing rafters. We've got a new dormer. That's what this gap is for. I'll show you in a second. But you see, he's got a frame of wall up here to support those because when he cuts this stair opening out, you know, they're going to be just sitting on the old decking and hanging out like that. So he's got to build this wall beside beside the existing wall. But it's okay because he's allowed for it in the in the width and his finished steps are going to be three feet and a quarter inches wide. Okay. Now you might want to think about that, Ray. Uh, that's really, uh, that's really not a good dimension because you won't be able to use three foot treads. You might want to, you know how you were talking about, and I'm talking to Ray right now, you know how you were talking about ripping these studs down? To three inches I would leave them three and a half because if you don't you're not going to be able to use three foot uh, treads and you could probably work this out to where you could get that to where you can do otherwise you're going to buy four foot treads just to you know, the reason I'm saying that's because you buy you can buy the treads already cut or you can buy them just you know 12 foot boards you know and you'll have to cut them all so really not that big a deal but yeah. Now, let's see, how long have I been going? No comments. Uh, how long have I been going? Because what I can do is I can, I can actually show how we would do this laminate flooring. And I got to put this. Other one by eight up here. Not there. I gotta put it right there, and then it'll come back uh, even with this one because again the drywall's not turned on and you can't see it. But it would be right there because of the drywall and the trim. And then what you would do is this is what we do: we make a bull nose. If you go back over to our drawing, our drawings. As Norm Abram used to say, I used to love watching this old house when I was younger because of the way Norm talked. He would say, let's look at our drawing. Yankees, it's funny. But if we look at our drawing, as a matter of fact, why don't I just, if I was smart, I would copy this profile. I said, if I was smart. And you see, we make a bull nose to, to mimic uh, these and the reason you have to make them is because honestly the the laminated flooring um, products are good but they suck when it comes to parts like that bull nose like the hardwood floor industry you can buy a bull nose paste see now I can I just saved myself a lot of trouble didn't I let's make that a, a a group and we will turn it over and spin her around now this is something we actually make because I hate the uh, I don't hate anything I dislike the products that are sold by the flooring industry for for laminate flooring now this part will go, where's our, let's turn our drywall on for a second. Yeah, that's right. You see, when you put that skirt board, oh good lord. When you put that skirt board on, that's just a 1 by 12 that you cut and slide down beside the stair. And again, that's what that 2 by 4 does, it spaces off the wall so you can get that stuff down in there without having to cut if you put your stringers against the wall guess what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to cut the drywall out in the shape of your stair and you're also gonna have to cut this skirt board out in the shape of your stair and if you were just uh, smart and listen to artist and Tony in the first place then you could uh, save yourself a lot of trouble but anyway I'm just kidding and then you put a piece of baseboard up here that's the same height 
And we typically, when we're doing these, Jesus, Jesus, we typically on the landings, we typically make, just make the baseboard for the landings. And then sometimes we'll put a piece of cove mold or a piece of shoe mold on top of that to give it a little detail, right? But if you can, sometimes you can't put regular baseboard here because of this thickness of your skirt. You want this to come up and neatly go around like that. And then by this point, you see, you're getting ready to put your flooring in. And now you can make your bull nose. Oh, I mean, I'm seriously gonna be frustrated if I don't quit backing into that stud. Okay, like that. And now these will be rounded. You know, I'm showing these all these square edges, but we ease the edge on them. All these edge, edges are eased. Uh, well, you buy when you buy your treads, they're a little rounded. So we just take the belt sander and round that edge. And I'm going to use that same hatch. Oops. On that, just to show what it is. Okay. So what that does is it gives you the same thickness on the front, you see. And then you butt your... Then your laminate flooring goes back here. I can't remember what we did to um, honestly. I think I think it's fine. I don't think you have to put a spline or anything here. I think the the laminate. From what I remember, we just put the laminate flooring into this, and then you've got shoe mold around that. See, but. What you have to do is you route, you, you groove this so that this is 12 millimeters. It's about a half inch. Okay. And then the front, uh, you know, you notice that we we notched it. Can we find it? Anyway, that's how that works. Okay. And then you'll have one up here too. And I didn't put that in that group, did I? We cut, paste, and let's see. What did I do? Paste in place. Yeah. And I'm going to copy it. Because you'll have one up here too. And I'll have to turn the decking on, which I knew was going to be in the way. And so you, now you can see the profile of it, you know. And this is, it's, you just have to find a good stable piece of wood to make this out of. And usually, you know, you'll make it out of oak or something. I think on my, I did, the latest one I did was my garage actually, and I just made it out of pine because I stained it. I had this gray, really nice looking gray uh, laminate floor, which I'm, I'm an old timer and I generally don't like laminate floors, but in this case, um, it worked out pretty good. Now we have a wall up here. Now normally if this stair was, if, if there was a handrail up here, we would make this bullnose turn. We would miter it right here and it would come around, but he's, we're building a half wall right here so we don't have to worry about it. So it would go back right here, minus a, well, it would be even with that. Yeah, that's right, it would be even with that. If I can get, get it even somehow, did I? Yeah. Okay. Isn't that pretty? That, this, that, that right there is part of the new wall framing. I don't have all the layers turned on. So that's that, Ray and Danner. I hope, hope that helps. Now I'm going to send you the model so you'll be able to turn on these layers. Just remember that, you know, this is in, you'll find out this is in a group. The stairs in a group in, did I already put it in the new? No, I didn't. Stair new. 
Okay, now it's in that layer, okay? Now let's turn all of our layers on. I'm surprised why is some of my subfloor missing. That's weird, did I accidentally? Uh, that's weird. Somehow some of the decking got put in. Layer management, I'm telling you, it's critical. All right, so all the layers are turned on and this will just give you an idea. And I didn't mean to turn the wall cladding on because I haven't worked on wall cladding. I haven't worked on that or the wall sheeting. I need to work on the doors and windows. Oh, but there's that half wall I was talking about that goes around the stair. Okay. And that's why your bull nose will stop right there. But here's the here's the new little roofs. Th these are additions. This all this white framing is the existing and all this wood is the new tan wood is all the new wood. So you can see they're gonna put an addition on each end, each side, and these new uh, this new roof framing. It's gonna be cool. And this new dormer up here, which is awesome. And the shed didn't have overhangs on it, so I've stuck these, showing them how to stick these new overhangs on while they're framing. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to miss the opportunity to get an overhang. The overhangs are really important. They protect your siding. Uh, they just, they just are very. They add a very neat look to your building. And I don't know why anybody would ever build a building without a roof overhang. It's just kind of silly to me. This roof overhang right here is going to protect your garage door. Because especially garage doors, you know, you got this situation where the door sits back and there's really not a good seal. I mean, there is, but you can get water under your door easily. And you just need a good overhang, you know, to help protect the, your doors. It's just part of the artisan way. Now what I'm going to do, I don't know if I'm going to do it here. I just wanted uh, Dan or Ray to be able to see that 3D part and I'm going to send it to them. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll uh, actually uh, create a drawing that they can print out as a guide to when they're framing. Uh, that will actually dimension the stringer, see? And so when they get ready to do their cut their stringers, all they have to do is look at that drawing. And once they get their stringers cut, they're pretty much home free. You know, they get their landing built and then you build your landing first and then cut your stringers. And now that you know, and we need to double check, by the way, they, uh, Ray and Danner, we need to double check the heights of everything and call me and let me know if I've got this right. Oh, Lord, help me. Um, we want to check the height from here, from the concrete here uh, to this floor, to the top of this floor, okay? And let me know, and before I put, really, before I put final dimensions on everything, that way, well, we can double check this. Like right now, I've got this landing set at on the framing part of it, uh, two foot five and, and 11 sixteenths, okay? And that's that's a real dimension. That's not something to be messed around with. So uh, also verify that you're gonna use that laminate flooring, okay? Because once you set that, once you set that uh, landing, you know, height, that's it. You have to, you have to know, and if you're a carpenter, don't ever let a homeowner or anybody tell you, you you can go ahead and build the stairs unless they commit in writing to you what your finished floors are going to be, okay? Because the first thing they will do is change it. And then your bottom, your, your bottom risers will be wrong and your top risers will be wrong because... Uh, it's like I had, I'm working on a job right now where the owner said they swore up and down. They didn't say laminate and they did. Well, they're going to put three quarter inch. They're adding a quarter inch to, uh, 
they're going to use hardwood, so it's three quarters versus 12 millimeters, like, you know, half inch, right? So they just added a, a quarter inch, and you say, well, that's no big deal. Well, it is a big deal, because what if my rise was already planned to be seven and five eighths? All of a sudden now you add a quarter to that and you're over the legal limit, a uh, riser height limit of seven and three quarters, okay? Plus the code does not allow more than a three H variation between your top riser and your other risers. Your top and bottom risers can only be, and that's really, honestly, three H is a piss poor attempt. Okay, I'm just gonna, that's the only cuss word I'm gonna say today. If you can't get your risers within an eighth of an inch, you need to go back to carpentry school. You need to go to the artisan school of construction and philosophy, okay? If you can't get your... And the reason you didn't get them... If you have a, that much variation in your top and riser and the rest of your risers, because guess what? All these risers are going to be the same. It's going to be your top and bottom riser. If you can't do that, then that means you did not do this, which is plan, plan it out on paper and look and say... Oh, look at all this stuff I have to account for. And that's why it's critical. You notice right here, if I can get my top view straightened out. You see, I'm accounting for the floor thickness they're going to add on the concrete right here, right? What if they decide they just want concrete? Now, I've got a, I've got a 7 and 15 sixteenths riser here. It's a code violation, right? What if they say, oh, I really don't want to put, what if they had just told me that in the first place, I could have adjusted this bottom stringer, right? It's just, it's critical, it's critical boys. So anyway, that's just to stress the importance of how important it is to play in these stairs. Let's see if I've got anybody. Looks wonderful. Thank you, Richard. Richard, you're always a good friend. Can't wait till you get over to the States. I can build you, help you build your cabin in the woods. That'll be fun. So anyway, I think I'm going to take a lunch break and then I'm going to work on the paper drawings for this. So this is part two of the stair construction. And I've got the link to Danner's channel. They're going to be, this will be the first thing they do is the stair. So it's going to be cool if you want to follow them actually building it. And uh, I think they have another YouTuber, I'm not sure, uh, gonna, that's going to help them actually do the work. And they're, um, so well, that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But anyway, I appreciate everyone watching. Thanks, Richard, for commenting. It's nice to get the comments. Uh, it lets me know you're out there. And... Um, also, Ray and Danner, after you see this, after you watch it, let me know what kind of questions you have or comments. And uh, we will see you on the next, in the next one.